Death Note has always been one of my favorite anime. It's easily top 10 for me, but it wasn't always like that. I remember I tried to watch it when I was younger, maybe around middle school, and I absolutely hated it. I thought it was too boring and I eventually dropped it. The only reason I picked it back up was due to the Netflix adaptation being announced. I was older then and I thought I should be fair and give it another shot. And boy, I fell in love almost immediately. Everyone always talks about how good the story or the characters are, but what did it for me personally was the atmosphere. The vibe is simply unparalleled. No other anime looks like this, let alone gives you the same feeling. Death Note has always been one of the most influential and popular anime slash manga from the 2000s up until this very day, and it's pretty easy to see why. From its moody shadow filled scenes to its bold graphic character designs, Death Note is a true visual feast. But what exactly makes its aesthetic so captivating? Join me as we analyze and break down the aesthetic of Death Note. Firstly, we have to describe what an aesthetic is because otherwise I'm just describing the art style. An aesthetic according to the Oxford Dictionary is a set of principles underlying and guiding the work of a particular artist or artistic movement. The word itself has undergone a metamorphosis over the years, transforming from an academic word into something utilized by online communities to categorize and define a visual identity. Death Note was written and illustrated by two different people during its development, Sugumi Oba as the writer and Takeshi Obata as the illustrator. So the art and story were created in conjunction. Obata's art perfectly encapsulates the mood of such a tonally dark story like Death Note. Just imagine if anyone else had done the art of Death Note it would have a drastically different feel to it. FYI, going forward, I'm going to go over both the anime and the manga's art style, as both halves are equally important to understanding the aesthetic. Obata draws traditionally with a semi-realistic art style. He implements delicate, precise light line work. He also sometimes will opt to forego outlines altogether for hard and soft edges, further pushing this realistic look to his characters. Obata's backgrounds are often intricate and fully rendered to fully add on to the realism. Overall, Takeshi Obata's art style is a masterful combination of technical skill, creativity, and expressiveness. His attention to detail and use of symbolism adds depth and complexity to his work, making it visually stunning. Whether he's drawing characters or environments, Takeshi Obata's dedication to his craft is evident in every stroke of his pen. It's no wonder that he's become one of the most celebrated manga artists of his generation. It's important to note that Obata's art style varies depending on what he's making. Take for example his art on Bakuman. It's a manga about making manga and the art reflects that. He uses speech bubbles, onomatopoeias, and halftones. But with Death Note, he opts to use things like skulls, Catholic iconography, and the colors red and blue. All notable within its own right and context to the story, but one thing I can't help but notice is how similar it is to symbolism. Not the term, but rather the art movement of the late 19th century. It has its roots in works of writers like Edgar Allan Poe and artists like Carlos Schwab. Symbolism was made as a reaction against naturalism and realism in favor of the macabre. Its purpose was to seek absolute truths and display ideas through symbols instead of portraying reality bluntly. Sound kind of familiar? Because to me, that sounds like Death Note. The characters themselves embody various symbols, such as light representing the desire for control, and L representing the pursuit of justice. The Shinigami represent the inevitability of death and the consequences of playing God. Furthermore, Obata's use of color is also symbolic. The color red represents light's sinful bloodlust, while blue is associated with L's cold logical intelligence. It's no doubt that Death Note is dripping in Western Gothic themes like dark mystery, suspense, and the supernatural. Gothic literature and art often use sceneries of black, decay, and death. Looking at the manga and anime, we see Obata use Gothic and Christian symbols heavily. 
Ryuk has this demonic look, contrasted with his wings, almost angelic, no doubt a reference to the iconography of a fallen angel. The usage of apples signifying the forbidden fruit of Eden and how light has partook of the death note which grants him knowledge, but will also eventually corrupt and condemn his soul. We also see this again in the first opening. There's a reference to Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam, which depicts light trading his morality to pursue his ideologies and Ryuk accepting that as a part of the deal, giving him the death note in return. Just like in the original art where God gave life to Adam, Ryuk gave life to Kira. According to Oba and Obata, they wanted to use a gothic Lolita design to convey the gothic imagery of the Shinigami in that world when it came to Misa Mane's design. Although it was changed in the anime, Misa wears a cross necklace and Melo wears rosaries. Also, due to Melo's association with the Mafia, it's shown that their hideout is adorned heavily with Catholic decor. The chapter covers of the manga almost always display crosses of some sort. Even the orphanage Elle was raised in is architecturally Christian. I feel like Gothic Christianity is the backbone of the aesthetic that Death Note has, but there's something else that truly brings it together. Since the story is set in the early 2000s, the combination of the gothic Christian themes with the advent of technology and the progressing times makes Death Note feel like Death Note, but I'll get into that later. They could have easily set the story in the future or medieval times, but it just wouldn't feel appropriate. Since it's more common to not believe in the supernatural nowadays, the looming reverence of Kira keeps the world of Death Note in check. It's like a twist on the religious fear of a deity. We can't talk about aesthetics without mentioning fashion. Majority of the main and side characters wear normal clothing, usually not even wearing accessories. Let's start with Light. In the first half of the series, he wears a standard schoolboy uniform. He sometimes dresses in a business casual aesthetic, but eventually defaults for a suit and tie in the second half of the series. He doesn't dress very flashy, but that's not to say Light doesn't really care about fashion or what he wears because it's totally in character for someone who perceives himself to be smarter than everyone to also dress the part. His personal aesthetic is cozy, but not unkempt. It's very similar to Dark Academia, but less old money vintage. And his color palette is full of neutral colors. L wears his iconic white long sleeve and blue pants. That's basically it. He may sometimes wear a pair of sneakers instead of going barefoot. There is a chapter of L and his strange living habits. For example, he sleeps in a chair that's lying sideways on the floor. He likes to be clean, but finds the act of cleaning to be a hassle, so he has a specially designed human washing machine. L is apparently either too lazy or actually incapable of changing his shirt, so Watari changes it for him. By these acts, we can tell that L doesn't like to be bothered with superficial things like fashion. Misa Amane for the first part of the series dresses in a gothic Lolita style. I won't go too much into detail about that aesthetic as I've already done so, but later on Misa does eventually ditch this aesthetic as she becomes an actor for the Yotsuba group. She no longer has a true aesthetic as her outfits are just casual modern looks for that time period. I feel obligated to mention Melo and his fashion choices as it contributes to the overall aesthetic. He opts to wear tons of leather and jackets that are very obviously designer. His most iconic outfit is a leather vest with leather gloves. He does have one outfit with a dark red fur coat chock full of chain accessories and zippers. Melo dresses like he's in opium. He's the destroyed lonely of the Death Note universe. Last but not least, we have Ryuk. Now, Ryuk doesn't really have outfits, but a base look. His aesthetic is heavily visual K inspired. He wears skin tight leather, feathers, and a belt adorned with metal chains, charms, and a buckle. Melo, Misa, and Ryuk feel like the only characters with an actual cohesive look to them that can be categorized as an aesthetic. If I were to define this aesthetic in a TikTokified buzzword, I'd call it Shinigami Core. For you um actually me, I know that the fashion of the series is heavily visual K inspired, but the presence of gothic Christianity kind of recontextualizes it. It makes it just slightly different because Christian iconography isn't a necessary requirement for visual K, but it is for Death Note's aesthetic. If anything, Shinigami Core would be a subgenre of visual K not distinct enough to merit its own classification. Anyways, I'm not an artist or a professional, so I came at this with my own knowledge and viewpoint. I personally love looking at certain things and trying to make sense of them, and I, I hope I've done so in a good way. But anyways, if you haven't done so already, consider liking and subscribing. This video couldn't have been made without you. 
So thank you, and I'll see you all in the next video.